Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I can't wait for iOS 5. And the problem is, is Apple is not making it available today. But they said it's coming this fall, which makes sense. Because today, when they announced the features of iOS 5, for the first time in public, uh, they didn't say anything about the next iPhone. But it's been alleged that the next iPhone will be out in this uh, next few months. This fall. So, they're releasing iOS in the fall, would stand to reason that they would also be releasing the new iPhone in the fall, with iOS 5. Uh, you know, they, they made a series of announcements today, covered it in other videos, uh, Mac OS X, Lion, as well as iCloud. Uh, but I gotta tell you, out of everything they announced today, I am probably the most excited about the features coming in iOS 5. I'm almost out of breath. I mean, not just because I've been drinking analysis juice, uh, but because I've been using uh, the iPhone pretty much since not exactly day one. Remember the first time I saw the iPhone or heard about the iPhone, I was like, this is stupid. I don't want it. That video is still on YouTube, and I'm still eating crow for doing the video. Either way, uh, I would say they've packed a ton of features. Actually, they said 200 new features on the webpage. Head over to apple.com slash iOS slash iOS 5 currently right now. Uh, and uh, you can get you can dive in deeper. I'm just going to give you my thoughts uh, as I uh, as I run through uh, this particular uh, the web page and, and looking at the uh, different features, telling you what I'm excited about because I'm sure people have been stopping uh, and, and, and saying, "Chris, uh, what do you think?" And so I'm here recording this video with analysis juice, telling you what I think of iOS 5. I think it is an amazing upgrade. Oh my goodness, I can't wait uh, it, because I use my iPhone. Every day. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna before I dive in too deep. I already I already know this video is going to attract haters, but I, I want to be very clear and, and and I have to give credit where credit's due. Earlier today, Eddie Ringel, uh, a, a very like one of the best geeks in the world, uh, he's uh, programmed quite a few open source uh, utilities, uh, including the uh, Empire Avenue plugin for Google Chrome, uh, the Funicode plugin for Google Chrome. He's also uh, helped with Wicket Pixie, the WordPress theme. Uh, he, he, he blogged today, and he was kind of going through what, you know, Apple was saying about iOS 5. And he was saying, these are not really new revolutionary features. And you know what? I don't think anybody would argue that. I, I think Eddie is absolutely correct. What we see in iOS 5, there are some things that I think Apple is doing differently, like out of the box, like natively, than, you know, differently than, let's say, the way Google's approaching Android. These aren't new features for the world. They're new features for people who have never jailbroken their phone, okay? Or who have just been using the iPhone. They're new features specifically for iOS, okay? Period. These are not new features. I have to... This is not like, oh, I can't believe Apple's blah. No. This isn't a revolution. This is an evolution. I just wanted to frame it the right way just so you know, okay? This is new for some of us, okay? And, and the thing is... I like Android. I can't wait for the web uh, OS uh, tablet to ship the uh, HP touchpad here in the next couple of months. Uh, I just happen to currently use as my default communications device either an iPad or an iPhone. I've been waiting for something better to come along. Just saying. Want to clear the air. And I know I'm going to still get attacked. Either way, uh, we're going to go ahead and dive in a little deeper. And you've probably already seen this web page because if you haven't... Uh, I don't know why you're even watching this video, if only to find out what the hell I think. I think this is just going to be awesome, uh, including the... Uh, I love this. Uh, so, no more interruptions. They're now uh, going to pop up your notifications here. Uh, whether or not that's going to interrupt any play or it's just going to be display remains to be seen, uh, you know, the actual usage case. Uh, of course, if you're a developer, you've probably already downloaded and installed this. Uh, then, of course... Uh, we've got the notifications as they may be seen on the iPad. Nice. They're broken down into different categories. Love it. Uh, this is a massive, massive update. Uh, then it looks like here, uh, we'll also have the ability to toggle weather and stock. Stocks I'm not as interested in, but the weather, that's awesome. Uh, that's, that's quite nice. So then you also, on the lock screen, have a few updates. So that's the way the lock screen looks outright. But you can also slide to start listening to your voicemail. Look at that Instagram update. So, you know, all the push notifications will stack up and you can interact with them right there uh, on the lock screen. That's nice. Uh, and then I may have to zoom out a bit just to get there. Notifications uh, it says tap a notification to respond from any app. Of course, that's how they show up there on the iPad. Uh, iMessage. Now, this is a big deal. 
not necessarily for you or for me, uh, for people who have been using uh, the iPhone, but specifically for BlackBerry users. They've been using the BlackBerry messaging system, and that's what they're addicted to. That's what they use. This, uh, from industry reports, is pretty much the BlackBerry killer. It's like the nail on the coffin. So this is a, a way uh, you can access uh, messages uh, from any iOS device currently, although I, I wonder why they didn't make a, a, a gateway for the, the desktop at this point. I don't know why they haven't bridged that gap. Uh, but the nice thing is, is I could be in a group chat on my iPad and pick it up the same group chat on my iPhone. So it's, it's like I can access it from any iOS device, which is nice. So yes, group chats including uh, text, messages, uh, they can see when you're typing, uh, you can include photos there, uh, videos, locations, contacts. Uh, it is, a for all intents and purposes, a rich chat. Uh, not just between you and another person, but specifically between you and a group of people. This may very well replace SMS uh, for a lot of iPhone users. Not every iPhone user, uh, but uh, certainly I'd say that uh, that goes a long, long, long way uh, to, uh, to making it easier to communicate with your friends, specifically those who are running uh, iOS. So uh, you can pick up where you left off. You can see when someone's typing, etc. Awesome. Newsstand. Eh, this is interesting, I guess. If you want to buy magazines and newspapers, they're just kind of making it easier, I suppose. I have yet to buy a single iBook. I, I haven't done it. Has anyone, does anybody buy the iBooks? I would use the Kindle, I think. I'd probably buy through the Kindle so I knew I could access it from anywhere. And I think Amazon's doing a, a slightly better job with that these days. Uh, either way, uh, you can stop, shop for subscriptions if you want. And I suppose that's nice uh, that you can subscribe to magazines you know, on your iPad if you want to. If that's the type of user you are, I'm not. Reminders, sounds nice. Task list. Uh, typically, I'll use a calendar to keep things uh, up to date and then it pushes the notification. Oh, yes, I got to do that. I got to do this. Uh, you can see what's next. You can keep a, a, an eye on things. The only thing, like you got a grocery list, different lists of things. So you can make sub lists. Uh, the only thing that I see as an issue is that I still don't see a way to share these lists with other people. And that's kind of frustrating. Like, if I'm going to create a task list, I would want a group task list. So I could, you know, manage effectively my business, uh, personal, everything. And so that I'm not managing a separate task list than everybody else. So that is a slight minor issue that I see could be, you know, again, still there, still present in the way that they're handling tasks. But at least they're doing it now uh, with uh, the reminders. The one thing that I think is, is probably the... I, I want to say the understated feature, but you can, you, this is what's awesome. You can set a reminder, uh, and as soon as I heard this, I freaked out. You can set a reminder on a certain day or at a location. So let's say you're thinking, oh, before I leave this conference center, I have to make sure I, I call uh, Pizza Hut or something. Uh, you can set a location reminder. So you set it there, there's, there's where it would be, or you set the reminder to go off when you arrive or when you leave. Think about that. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, so I, I'm looking forward to finally being able to use a feature like that. That's that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, get alerts. They appear on your lock screen. That's fine. Uh, make uh, items on your to-do list right there. It's fine. The set locations thing. I think that's that's the prime feature. Twitter. Interesting here. Uh, if you hadn't signed up for Twitter yet, uh, this might be a good time. At Chris Perillo on Twitter. Follow me there. Uh, and now it is uh, pretty much baked into the entire operating system. This is, I, maybe, you know, you've seen a better device, but dude, they're like, they've sewn it in. You can use Twitter from just about any application, the web browser, uh, from mail, from, I believe they also said, uh, hang on, yeah, from the YouTube, uh, from apps, from the YouTube, the YouTube app, not the YouTube. I'm not that crazy. Either way, you can attach photos and upload that way, add a location, you can tweet from anywhere. Uh, so you basically can manage several accounts uh, on the system, and uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of that easy. So if you haven't been pulled into Twitter yet, and you have an iOS device, you, you you're probably uh, going to get onto Twitter now. So uh, there you go. That's that one. No, camera's got a handful of updates that I, I'm very much appreciative of. Although I didn't hear of one feature that maybe they'll uh, be updating with the next iPhone. Uh, so now. I'm just going to dive into a few things. The big thing is you can access your uh, camera app from the lock screen, and uh, that would have come in handy, uh, you know, a few times. You know, you fumble around, you got to launch the app, get wait for it to open. Here, boom, done. And then a shutter button, you just press the volume up button, it takes the picture. 
kind of nice. So two new two features there. Then they've also added the auto focus and auto exposure. So instead of just tapping to focus, you tap and hold. It locks the focus at that uh, distance and also sets the auto exposure right there which is nice. Pinch to zoom. You also get the rules of nine, the grid lines, if you've seen them before. Uh, the tic, like turns it into a tic-tac-toe here. I, I realize it's kind of subtle. Let's see. Is that kind of picking up? It kinda, it's barely picking it up there, but there, there's, there's a little line. So uh, that's a nice little feature they've added to the camera app. Again, I hope to see uh, uh, the only one feature that I'm hoping for in the, the next camera on the next iPhone is instead of recording video... Here, hang on should have pulled this out for this demonstration, but uh, you know how someone records a video like this and the video turns out like like this? You know, like uh, instead of being wide, like a HD video is embedded in YouTube, it's it, HD video, but it's in a vertical orientation? Dude, that's a huge bug. Like, there's no difference between the camera's lens in this orientation or this orientation. No matter how you're filming, it should always, it, whether you're holding your phone like this or this, it should always be recording widescreen videos in, in well, a wide screen instead of a tall screen. Huge, huge shortcoming. And I don't know what the hell someone was smoking to have that bug live, leave that long, or live that long. Uh, Photos has got a new, uh, a couple new features, including being able to crop and rotate. Uh, you can edit on screen, uh, including auto enhance. Uh, and the, you, it's, it may be imperceivable here at this particular distance, but uh, this picture is a bit cooler. This is a bit warmer with uh, auto enhance. Uh, I don't know if you're able to detect the preview, but maybe you can with this particular camera. You can also now remove red eye uh, in, in images, which is nice if you use the flash. I hardly do. Uh, Safari has got a handful of new features, including tab browsing, which has been available uh, for a while with third-party apps. You also have a reading list, which syncs across all your Safari instances. You have Reader, uh, which is a bit like uh, uh, well, it, it, the, the Reader feature inside of uh, Safari now. And there's actually a plugin uh, for uh, Google Chrome that does virtually the same thing. Strips out all the data and just let, uh, makes it easier for you to read uh, the text on the page. Uh, so it basically takes this web page and makes it look like this. Easy, 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 especially on a mobile device, it, and especially if the website wasn't optimized for mobile. Another big deal about iOS 5, it is PC-free. And when they say PC, personal computer. Uh, with iOS 5, you no longer need a computer to own an iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch. There you go. Set it up automatically. You're done. That's it. You don't need to tether it anymore. So uh, that's a big deal. Because, uh, you know, that means you don't have to have two... If you wanted to get one of these and you didn't want to connect it to your computer, you didn't ha now you don't have to. That's nice. That's very nice. There's a little feature here too, by the way, when you're setting up a new iPhone, restore from iCloud backup. I'll get to that in another video. Don't worry. In fact, I may have recorded the video by the time you watch this video. Uh, Mail uh, has gotten some features, uh, new features, including uh, the ability to do rich text like underline, uh, bold, or italicize. And I'm not sure that's as interesting, but maybe some of you want it. Uh, iCal updates or calendar updates uh, right there, uh, including being able to share calendars with your friends. Wi-Fi sync. So if I plug in my iPhone... Anywhere in my house, it'll automatically synchronize with uh, whichever computer had uh, iTunes, if uh, or I guess yeah, any new backs up any new content to iTunes if if you're using iTunes to back up. Uh, always have your movies, TV shows, home videos, photo albums everywhere you want them. Which is I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scroll up there. Uh, anywhere you want them. So the Wi-Fi sync is something people have been waiting for as well. No PC and Wi-Fi sync. They're getting they're cutting the cable. That's that's good to hear. Uh, Game Center has got a few new updates uh, to it. If you're, you're a big gamer. Uh, multitasking gestures for the iPad, in including, I believe, you can three-finger swipe, and that'll switch between apps. So instead of having double-click and switch between apps, you just swipe, 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 swipe on the iPad, and you can switch between the applications. Another big deal about uh, iOS, uh, or, sorry, yeah, iOS 5, AirPlay mirroring for iPad 2. Now, you can do this specifically with uh, an HDMI cable attachment, but now, if you have an Apple TV, you can broadcast your iPad to it. Like, whatever's on your iPad screen can be broadcast to the TV. Yeah. Uh, everyone in the room sees exactly what's on your iPad display on the big screen, even when you rotate the iPad from portrait to landscape or zoom in and zoom out on photos. Uh, it's video mirroring, like, perfectly. Uh, whether you're in the boardroom, classroom, living room, I bet you anything, a lot of you are going to start carrying around um, I, I, um, Apple TVs with you, just so you can just show off, like, I'm just going to... And all you need, really, for, for that to work is an HDMI to VGA adapter if you're worried about trying to connect it to like a, a a classic projector that only supports VGA. Oh, dinosaurs. 
Uh, let's see here, scroll down. Accessibility has changed. Okay, the iOS 5 is compatible all the way back to iPhone 3GS. Uh, iPod Touch third generation, and of course the original iPad. So there's you go. Uh, there, there's you go. Uh, a high level overview of uh, some of the 200 new features uh, that will be shipping in iOS 5. Um, should be out. They say this fall, likely in line with the next iPhone. I'm very excited. I don't know. I, I think I'm always more excited for the software updates than I am the hardware updates. Um, you know, the hardware updates will be nice, but like I said, I think iOS 5. I want these features now! But you can have them if you just switch to X. I'm happy with what I have. It's not bad. It works. And you know how much money I've spent on applications? I'd have to spend all that money all over again. Forget about it. Either way, uh, hope you enjoyed this ranting or raving or whatever the heck you would call this particular video um you know feel free to drop me a line chris at perillo.com let me know what you think what is the one feature you're looking forward to most in ios 5 be interested seriously in in, in seeing what the uh, most of the community is interested in because i know you know there's certain things that are going to trip my trigger more than they're going to trip yours but hey it's a big world at chris perillo on twitter just like i said follow me now and you know when you start doing the ios stuff you can say at chris perillo hey i'm using ios 5 check out blah 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 Facebook.com slash Chris Perillo. That's one thing. There's not a lot of Facebook integration in iOS 5. Hmm. Me thinks that Zuckerberg upset the jobs. Just a bit. And, of course, uh, we also have uh, the uh, Empire Avenue playground where we can invest in one another. And uh, when I started the recording, I was at 209.69. That's my stock price. Uh, let's see here. What am I at now? 209.69. Ah, 209.72. You could have been making, well, not real money, virtual money in the time that I started recording the video and now just by investing in me on Empire Avenue. EmpireAvenue.com slash Perillo. And if you want a, a bonus, uh, more eaves, go to, uh, if, you, if you go through my link, then you get more. So you start out from scratch, but you get more if you go to go.tagjag.com slash Empire Avenue. And they've got all my social profiles linked there, including YouTube and everything all my social gestures count, and all the gestures that you make count to you. Anyway, I've done the video before. Where am I at now? Oh, the geeks, that's right. Uh, we've got a chat room that's a part of a live video feed, and uh, they're geeking out. They're geeking out right now, uh, as a matter of fact, as I'm recording this video. I can't see it because the TV's off, and I've got the chat room in the background. But you're more than welcome to join us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.